Today we'll talk about Gemerix. If you have been writing scripts in Unity, you have been using it even if you haven't realized it. Usually when we try to access the component on the object, we use the getComponent method. Between the angle brackets we put the type of the component we want to get, and then we get back exactly the type we want. Whenever you create a method, you declare a single return type. So how is it possible that one method returns different things? That is the power of generics. When we say that something is generic, that means it has been designed to work with multiple types, sometimes with any type and sometimes with a group of types. The clearest example of that are the generic collections. For example, every time we create a list, we declare what type of the values it will store. For example, we cannot add integer to a list of strings. And of course the other way around. We cannot add strings to a list of integers. The real power of generics becomes apparent when we start creating our own types. We we'll create a new collection called random list. It will allow us to add and remove items and then also get the random one. Next to the class name, I'm adding the angle brackets. In between of them, I'm adding the letter T. It doesn't have to be T, but the convention is to use the letter T or the letter T followed by a word. For example, T item. In case your class will require more than one type, you can use for them the next letters in the alphabet. So the first type is T, the second one is U, and so on. Now in my class, I can not only use the specific types, also use the generic type t. So now when I create a field of the type list, I can simply pass to it the generic type. That way the type the list can store will be inherited from the type provided by the developer when creating new random list. Now I create two simple methods, add and remove. As you see, I can use the type t as the parameter type. Now I will add the getRandom method and this time I will use the generic type as the return type. Now in the generics basics class, I'm creating a field of the type random list of strings. As you see, I'm able to add and remove strings and also get the random element. Let's test the script by assigning it to an empty object. Woohoo! Everything working as expected. One important thing about the generic types is we can put constraints on them. I'll provide a link to the list of all constraints in the description. But together let's have a look at the most common one. I created a character class, then two classes NPC and enemy extending it. Now in our random list class, after the name, I'm adding the word where, after it we define the constraints. In our example, the type T has to be of type character or any type derived from it. So now if we have a look at our generics basics class, we'll see that our random list collection doesn't like the string type. And that makes sense because of the constraints we introduced. But of course anything related to the character type will be accepted. Now let's have a look at generic methods. We'll do that on simplified version of the service locator pattern. If you would like to learn how to create a proper one, subscribe to my channel and turn on the notifications. Pretty soon the video about the service locator should be ready. Also, if you would like to play a bigger role in our small community, feel free to visit our Discord, the link is in the description. Now back to the generic method. First I'm creating a class that will simulate a service. Then I'm creating service locator class. Inside of it I create a dictionary with the keys of the type type and the values of the type object. It will be used to store all of the services. Now I'm creating first generic method register. After the name of the method I add the angle brackets with the generic type t between them. Then I'm using the t type for the parameter. Inside of the method I use the type of the t as the key and the service provided as a parameter as the value. Then I'm creating second generic method, get. This method simply grabs the type of the provided type and returns a service registered under it. As I want the service locator to be available in the global space, I'm making the dictionary and the method static. Then in our generics basics class, I'm creating new service and registering it. As you see, I don't have to provide the generic type because the compiler is able to infer it from the type of the parameter. Now using the get method, similarly to the way the get component method works, I can get the service I'm interested in. And that's really it for today. I hope you found it useful. Have a fantastic day. Love you and bye bye.